Good day for friends, it is Friday afternoon, just got time to get one more in before the weekend. It's been a very busy week here at Fret Friend. Um, it's been a productive week, it's been a fantastic week. Um, and this guitar I've got on the bench is no exception to the goodness. And I'll just show you what it is, and then I'll explain a couple of things about it. So here you go. It's an absolutely brand new guitar. It is a beautiful looking thing, a fantastic colour. It is a player series Strat, made in Mexico, got a nice weight to it, looks fantastic. Now you're thinking, well what's that doing in there if it's brand new? Ah, nah, there you go, you see. It's not in because it needs any work, it's in because the owner wants it changing, he wants modifications to the guitar. And when the guy emailed me about this, he actually, this is remarkable, he actually emailed me and said, look, I bought this guitar with you in mind. And you're thinking, what do you mean you in mind? He bought it, he saw my work on YouTube and he thought to himself, that's the guy I want to do, uh, to work on my guitar. So he bought this guitar with me in mind and he wants all of the hardware changing to black, everything. Everything that is not black on there, he wants changing to black. He even looked at getting black fret wire. Well, as far as we know, you can't get black fret wire. But you can get black strings. He hasn't bought black strings either, but everything is going to be changed. We have got back plate, pickup covers, fender locking tuners, input jack, string trees, black screws for the pick guard, neck plate and screws, Wilkinson tremolo. He did send the wrong tremolo. He says, oh, right, okay, so let me know which one you want and I'll get that. And he went and bought straight away the right tremolo got that sound. That's the wrong tremolo that's going back to Northwest Guitars. That is a six point screw type tremolo, which we don't need. So fantastic we've got these bits. Oh, and also black pick guard. Blah, 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 blah. So all I'm really going to be doing is changing over the hardware, all of the hardware. But one thing I've noticed, I will also be giving it the... Um, the new guitar setup, which I do for a special rate of £35. Um, I do that only on new guitars. If you buy a new guitar, you should not be going and chucking £50, £60 on a, on a proper setup on a brand new guitar. So I do an introductory new guitar offer, where if, if you bring your recent receipts with your brand new guitar, I will do a setup for you for £35. Of course, on top of that, any hardware and strings are on top of that, you have to pay extra or separately, but I'll do the setup for 35 quid, so I'm going to do that with this, but however, that said, I've been across, I've loosened the strings, I've been across with Fret Rocker, and lo and behold, and do you believe this, this is an absolutely brand new guitar out of a factory, and there are at least three high frets. Boys and girls, fret friends, that really should not happen, but it has happened, and um, I'm going to show that in a later video when we've got everything set up, blah, blah, blah. And I've got the camera in a different position and we'll go across, we'll get the neck absolutely straight and we'll go across with fret rocker and check which one. Now, that said, I'm not gonna be charging for fret level. What I've decided I am going to do is I'm gonna charge each fret at five pounds per fret to put right. Uh, I think that's a fair price. I think there are three, maybe four tops. It's gonna to be another extra 15, 20 quid. I've quoted the guy, I already made him a quote for this whole job anyway. Uh, very, very reasonable. I thought I'd be charging him something like three hours labour tops. Um, I'm going to try and keep it around that mark. It is not expensive, but if I'm going over three hours, obviously I'm going to charge a bit more. There will be a little bit up and down. He says, look, whatever it costs, it doesn't matter. I want you to do it. So we are, or I am, going to get this guitar absolutely right. So one more thing I'm checking for in the box, are there any, I don't see any strap, not strap pins, but you know, whatever these are called. Uh, I don't see any black ones of those anywhere. Maybe there are, is some in the case, I'll go and have another look in a minute. If not, I will get in touch with Steve, who this guitar belongs to and let him know. Oh, hang on, did, I'm sure I did include some. I'm sure there's some strap locks in with this. Have I mislaid anything? Now there's something in there. There you go. They're not strap locks, but they are in the bag. We have got them. So that is everything. I can't think of anything else we need to put in there. So what am I going to do with this? Right, well, I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take everything off the guitar. 
I'm going to undesolder these two wires and the earth wires inside. I'm going to swap everything over. It's a fair bit of work in this. Did I see a black switch tip anywhere? Not sure I did, but I'll tell you what, I'm sure I've got one knocking about somewhere. So anyway, nice easy one. It's not going to take me too long. A nice relaxed one. Uh, oh, something else I need to do is the string creep there. There's only one on there. Here's it sent two, so I'm going to install another one. Uh, do we need one there? I don't really think we need another one. Maybe I'm going to move it a little bit closer than you normally would. Otherwise, that brake angle is going to be too much. I will talk to Steve about that. But that is it. What I am I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the strings, start removing some hardware, um, and we are going to go. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this neck straight. We're going to get the camera set up in another position, and we're going to go across the fret rocker, and we're going to see what we need to do with these frets. So. Guys and girls, stay tuned. You're coming on this journey with me. It's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a nice, or well, a relatively easy one. I'm really looking forward to it. So, come back soon. Okay, friends, this part of the video is specifically for the owner of this brand new guitar. Mexican player series Stratocaster. Um, we have got the neck straight. Not straight edge on there, just to make sure there are no gaps under anywhere. I do have a light, a pen light, which I'll shine underneath. I've already checked this. So we're going to go across with the fret rocker. And for those of you who don't know what a fret rocker is, it's a four-sided piece of flat metal. This shape, four different lengths. This is an actual precision one, laser cut. Uh, milled perfectly flat and the reason we have four sides is so we can check three frets at a time and as we progress along the length of the neck we turn over to different lengths just so we can always only check three frets and that means if we get a rock anywhere we know that fret is high so we're going to go across all of the frets starting at this end three areas center far side near side far side from me not you Keeping quiet, so if we get one, you'll hear it. One high spot, not a lot in it, in it, but it's a high spot all the same. This should not happen with brand new guitars. These two, though, because on the outside, they're not. It's not major work. And this one, fret 9, all the way across is high, that's a whole fret. Don't ask me why this happens. spots and what we'll do is we'll go again with a fret rocker these frets should be spot on you expect some high frets at your cheaper companies like Epiphone and Squire you kind of expect it but Fender People say the Mexican fenders and Chinese fenders worse than American ones. Definitely the Mexican ones are. Definitely the Chinese ones are. They are an inferior instrument as far as I'm concerned. So more or less just about all the way across.
doesn't matter about the last one, a little bit of a high spot there. It doesn't matter because it doesn't affect anything because that is the last fret. So we are going with one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we've certainly got one, two, three, four major. But we're just going to check this edge again. Listen. And this one. This one. Across the whole length of this fret. That's three. Four, that's across two thirds. Five. Six high frets. Uh, I'm prepared to do sort these out for £25 extra on top of the price. The thing is, this should not happen on brand new guitars. What I'll be doing is I'll be skimming across the top of these, be getting them to the level of the ones around them. Hopefully that will not affect uh, the other frets around them. The problem is if I alter this fret here, which is very high, it's going to alter, it's going to affect its relationship with those two frets and these two frets. That will be in the middle. I take the material from there, it could actually make these two high or even these two. So we're going to just hope but just lowering that one is going to be okay with all the others. So I do have six to do. Normally I wouldn't do six by hand. I would recommend we skim across the whole lot. Uh, but that is time consuming and it's expensive. And so I'm just going to go across these six. I can do them by hand. Uh, it should be fine so long as no other frets around them are affected. So I'm going to leave this. I'm going to send this part of the video off to the owner of this guitar, Steve, out in Manchester. I think it's Manchester. And let him peruse the video. And uh, once he has come back and okayed the work, we will crack on with it. Get all, get, we'll get the neck done, and then we'll swap all of the hardware out and get the guitar rebuilt. So a little bit of additional uh, for the video on the upgrades on this um, Player Series Strat. And we have a not straight edge, 25 and a half inch scale. And we're just making sure that the neck is as straight as it can be. And there you go, and it is. And what we're going to do is we're going to go across here with a fret rocker. I've already been across the frets, I know which ones have high spots. I'm going to go across with a fret rocker. Just let me show that this is a. I do have a pen light somewhere. If this, if this is not straight, you'll see light underneath. And I'm shining it under the flat bit, not under the holes. And I assure you that this neck is as flat as I can get it, or as level as I can get it. So, not straight edge, not straight. I'm just going to grab my. Um, I've already got it out. Fret rocker. I already know there are six high frets on this brand new guitar neck. And I know Steve, the owner of his guitar, expected it not to be perfect, he's, he's said as much in an email. But so anyway, four different lengths. This is a precision fret rocker from GW Guitars and Woods in Portugal. This is not the five pound cheap crap, this is the 15 pound laser cut, guaranteed flat one. So the reason why four sides is, or four lengths is, we always check three frets and we turn the gadget accordingly so we can always check three frets and we check three at a time because that way if one is high we know it's high because it will rock so we're going to go across I do three areas I do the middle I'll do the far side as I look at it and the near side so I'll call this one two and three so we're going to go across and we're going to check all of the frets One area there. There might be more than six. I didn't didn't uh, note this one before. Two. Three. 
Rather than skim across all of them, I'm going to flat file these. There you go again. Three, hold for it. Four, hold for it. Five is as many as I'd like to do flat, flat filing or spot filing, but in this, I'm going to make an exception for this one. I'm going to just charge five quid per fret, then all being well, I'm going to do what needs doing because they're quite far apart. A lot of these. Tiny bit there, but it's very tiny. But it's still there. Three, four, five, that's six frets. A high fret is a high fret. There you go. Let me just close the door because my wife is doing a Spanish lesson at the moment. And the noise is filtering through. All the way across seven, so we have seven frets. Two of them are not particularly high. And the next last one doesn't matter because it's only affecting this last fret. So let's recap, let's go across again, making sure With it, that, but that's flat, so let's go again. Let's listen. One, two, all the way across on this one, three, all the way across on this one, four. Virtually all the way across on this one. Five. Just at the edge on that one, six. And this one. All the way across seven. So we have seven high frets. Should be charging five each. I think I mentioned earlier, I'm going to charge 25 quid for all of these. That's, a, a, that's a one hour. Well, my hourly rate is £30 an hour, but if I'm already doing a job, it's 25 quid an hour. And I can probably just get these done in an hour. Not that I'm going to rush anything. I'm going to take my time. This will be... I'm not doing this today. I've got other work to do this weekend. Uh, this will be a Monday job. So, I'm just going to write down a little map. I like I say, I have three areas, one, two, three. Closest to you, one, middle two, closest to me, three. So I've got threat, threat three, area two, just in the middle. Threat five, area one. Threat seven, all three areas, I mark that with an X. Threat nine, all three areas. Threat 12, areas two and three. Threat 17, area one. And threat 19, all three areas. And that helps me, that shows me exactly, I totally understand that. Threat 3, area 2, threat 5, area 1, 7, all 3, 9, all 3. Is that 15, 2 and 3, 17, 1, threat 19, all three areas. So I know, so if his pen does rub off, 
doesn't matter. I know which areas I need to level. Seven frets is certainly more than I would like to do with a flat file. But in this instance, it's what I'm going to do. Otherwise, I'm going to, have to charge for a complete fret level, which will be 85 quid. And that just takes some extra job too expensive. But anyway, just wanted to show Steve that on camera. Um, just to show that he's getting value for money. And uh, that everything is all above board. I've changed my mind. I've decided I'm going to do the frets now. And I'm just going to flat spot file these high ones. And it will mean I have to recrown everything. Uh, especially if I do it. Well, it depends which way I use the file. Sometimes, very rarely, I'll use it this way. Ideally, I should use it this way. But that is going to scratch up all of the other frets and it's going to create a lot more work. So I'm actually going to go this way. What I'm going to do is, I could put a fret guard on there, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to tape up each fret as I do it. And that's just so I don't mark the fingerboard in any way, shape or form. And this is just in case I slip with a file. And for when I um, recrown the fret, I like explain these things as I do them. So we have one high spot on this fret, just in the middle. And you, the camera may not pick it up from that kind of distance away, but we'll have a go. I'm sure you can hear that. So. Flat file, always white file. This is my best file, it's my favorite file. It's a number four cut, which means it's a very smooth, but sharp cut. There's one safe edge there. It has one perfectly flat side here. This is a little bit bent, but this is perfectly flat this side. It's such a smooth cut, but very, very sharp. And all I'm gonna do is across the top of the fret, and I'm just gonna follow and that's as much as I'm going to do because it is a sharp file. Just follow the radius of the neck, and it's still rocking. Always wiping the file. Again, we now have that's now level with a level fret. That's great, and we always check one back and one forward just to make sure that the relationship between these two and these two has not changed. So proving that this was just one high fret. That's beautiful. So now we've done that, I'm going to take a different colour pen across the top. I'm going to be crowned. So we're flat spotted across this middle. I'm going to build that crown back up really, really easy. We don't have to go gung ho at anything. Three cornered file, ground smoothed edges, three off, so we don't cut into the fingerboard anyway. I still tape up anyway, and all we're gonna do is I'm gonna carve into the fret and on the far side. I'm gonna angle the file towards the camera. On the near side, I'm gonna angle it away from the camera, and we're gonna rebuild that crown. So we're gonna take a couple of strokes. We've took the tiniest bit off the top, so some people might say this is overkill, not for me, I don't want the flat spots, so it's just matter of just following the grain or the radius and I just want to leave a, a really thin black line down the center of that fret which I have done probably not going to see it from where you are and once that's done I'm going to take the profiling file nice and sharp and what I'm going to do with this is just remove any burrs and any inconsistencies uh, from a free corner file this is going to even them out and just make a nice smooth Crowd. and there you go and that is it that is that fret now leveled and recrowned perfectly level with the frets around it both sides and that is done that's as difficult as it is move on to the next one mark it back up exactly the same a tiny tiny bit on this one remove the tape Really, you have to really, really take your time with frets because if you take too much off, you'll be leveling the whole lot. So always 
small cut, check your work, small cut, check your work all the time. It's a precision job, you've got to know what you're doing with this. So let's measure twice, cut once. Okay. So it starts where the red starts, ends on the far side. So again, always wiping the file. Flat side down. Steady it with your finger if you need to, right so, and just nice and smooth. Check again. Just on the end now. We've done this part from there to there. Just on the end bit. Again, nice and smooth. Check again. Still high. Check back one, check forward one. See, now it's affected this fret here. And that's always a problem when you spot leveling, is it's going to affect frets around it. I could end up doing this, 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 and this all the way along now. Work needs must. The high fret is a high fret. That's done. Finish that one. A little bit high, it's not done. Tiny, tiny bit. And that is done. Good that side. But now this one's high next to it. Just on that edge. And this is what I mean. I may have seven to do spot filing, but it's going to affect the ones next to it. So that is now eight frets I'm going to have to work on. Normally I would just level the whole lot. I'm actually cheating a little bit today just to keep costs down. But let's just check this one again. That's brilliant. So I only need to recrown this part of this fret. Always wipe the file. see how it works now but already I've made more work for myself by working on fret 5 now fret 6 needs attention because where I've removed material from there has made this one low as well so what we're going to do is with these two we're going to do these two together it's not so bad on the edge let's just go with one for now let's keep it simple Shouldn't need a lot of work, but it still needs work. And we're there. I know that one's high anyway, that's good. So, I'm gonna go with the red pen. Again, crowning. Keep the fingers there, stop it slipping over because it can slip over. If it does that, it's going to scratch the whole fret and you'll end up polishing the whole lot. Just check in again. That's beautiful. Profile file, what have we done with it? Right in front of me, lot. Snow blind there, just like a little bit snow blind. Next one, the whole fret is high. This is going to be a challenge. Can I just say, I love my work. This is my full-time job now. So if I don't get any guitars in, I don't earn any money. So I love my job. And this is why I hope it shows through with my work. I like to take the time, I like to do things right. I am um, 
I'm, I'm quite meticulous. I like to do things the proper way. And it's important for me to get good customer reviews uh, to, for people to know that I love the work I do. It's great to know that I'm appreciated. But anyway, let's check this. Really quite high, this one. This one's going to be a challenge. I don't know how they got through quality control. Did we check the frets at all? This one's going to need a lot of work. Now people say to me sometimes, why don't you just use a profiling file? So on this one fret, I am going to just use a profiling file. And it probably won't remove too much height, but it may do. It does the same job. But sometimes slightly misses the top middle because of its profile. But we'll give it a go. And if I really wanted to, I could use a 3mm side and that would flatten out the top. But we're just going to keep checking the fret first. It's fine in the middle. It's a little bit high in other places. So I'm going to carry on with this. I've never used this file on time before. It's a bit high. Good there. Still high there. Okay, I'm going to remove some of the height with this file. It's just the middle's fine. This edge and that edge. And we're good. may not like I'm whizzing through these quickly, and that's a good thing. But the thing is, all of these frets are going to need polishing with five different grits of sandpaper. That is where the extra time comes into it, the equation. Yeah, I'm not doing, uh, I'm not making money by doing these things. No, it's not easy money. Nothing's easy money in my job. Okay, let's try that. That was, that's a level there, I'm really pleased. That was easier than I expected it to be. That is perfect. Right, so a new, slightly new technique there. Could get a bit more difficult at this end with the body, the deck still attached to the body. So what I will do is, when I get up there, I'm gonna remove a neck, just so I can't with the file, because otherwise I'm gonna be digging into the body there Digging into the body there. Well, I do take bodies up and I do cover some chamois leather, but we're not going to get the angle. This is the advantage of having a guitar where I can remove the neck. Now, if it was a if it was a set neck, what I would do then is I'd do this, like for instance, I've got to do the whole fret here. I would do it in two parts. And what I would do is I'd do from centre to there because that way I can have the file basically flat and just arcing down on that bit and not goes too far. So I'm gonna go as far as that. Then I turn the guitar around and I go from the center that way and I'd go this way where I'd have this part of the body covered. So you'd have to do it in two halves, you'd flip the guitar over. But because I've got a, it's a removable neck, it makes the job a lot, lot easier. So if you can remove a neck to level frets, remove the neck. There's nothing worse than digging a body and having it, having to get it all sorted out. I've done it before when I was uh, doing this a few years ago when I was just starting out as a business. And uh, I did ding a body, it cost me 180 quid to get it put right, because everyone knows I don't do paint here. I did outsource the painting jobs, it's not something I can do. Don't have the materials, don't have the space, don't have the experience. This is one high fret. Okay, I'm gonna try again with this, but I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna flat file it. But let's just see how we go on. I'm slightly pressing in with that file, giving it a bit more gusto than I normally would do. Okay, that's good there. But still high. 
some kind of an early stylus. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna flat file it. I get a better feel with a flat file because I know I can feel the radius. Keep checking, that's good. High in the middle, high on this edge. I can't see my mind's eye, here is one. When I'm doing it with mind's eye, I do one, two, three, four, five. And I can already see spots one and spots five. So, nice and careful, edge, and across the middle. I like to say this comes from experience, but I've just naturally always been able to work frets. You know, it's like I've got a feel for it. And I'm not saying I didn't have to practice, of course I had to practice, you had to practice anything when you're honing new skills. But I talk to this more or less like a duck to water, so to speak. It's just something I've always been able to do. Anyway, check it again. I'm going to do this the old fashioned way. I'm going to three corner file it. I think you guys are enjoying this. This was not part of the job I was expecting to do. I was expecting this to just be a strip everything off, put everything on, get the guitar set up, job done. There's a little bit more work involved than that now with these frets. Again, nice and gentle. Keep the file flat first and then start arcing it toward the camera. I'm just building up that arc. Wipe the file clean. This side. Same again. And just slightly arc the file away. Just hold it there just to keep it nice and steady. Profiling file again. The two and a half mil side. Again, check one fret back, no extra height, oh no height, that's brilliant, and one forward. And this could not really be going any better than it is. So, one, two, three more to do. I'm going to stop the camera for now, or stop filming for now. I'm going to remove the neck, I'm going to do this one, then I'm going to remove the neck, and I get these two done. You've seen how I do it. It is, like I say, it's a precision job. You really must, I can't emphasize enough, you must take your time when doing this. You, if I remove too much material from this one fret, I have to level all the other frets down to how low this is. So you've got to really know what you're doing. I'm actually not gonna do this with the body, with the neck on the body, because it's too close to here. I am there, I'm, I'm that close. I don't wanna, if I slip, we're gonna have an accident, and it's gonna cost money to put it right. So. That is it for now. I hope you enjoyed this little part of the video. I'll do the rest off camera. I assure you that, that these will all be done. I will polish all of the frets. And um, when you come back, we'll be ready to take some parts off and put the new parts on. So I've removed the neck from the guitar just to make things a lot easier. I still have these three frets to do. I'm gonna film a lot, decided. So again, Check the height of the frets right with tape on there, can you? Okay, it's more or less all the way across. What I'm going to do, because we don't want tape on top of the frets, so I can always check the level, is we'll rip the tape in half down there. Down this length, like so. Like I say, you really got to take your time doing this. Because you go too low, you're going to level all of them to how, how low that is. So you've got to be pretty much bang on. And that's all the way across the fret to there. 
we don't just touch this end, we don't just touch that end. It does happen, sometimes you get the ends in right, but the middle pops out. So, I've got a profile, using profile in file here. Concentrating more on the middle, I reduce the height that way. Now it's not having the desired effect, so go with the flat file again. Nice and smooth, not too gung ho. Pretty good. And what was that? Three or four strokes? Very sharp file, this. I love it, it's a great file. You always know you're removing the edges when you get that noise, that grating noise. When it starts to smooth out, you know you're more or less cutting off. You don't want to remove it any more height. I'll just eyeball that. It still looks a bit flat in the middle. I'm going to go with the 345 in a minute. Very happy with that. Sometimes you can just see. I'm just going to bring that over a bit. to remove off this one but right at the edge it's quite a bit so flat file this one see how I just will roll to it I actually do roll and push down towards the end because that's where I need to remove most of the material most of the material at the last five millimeters of this one and that's it and there's still a lot there it needs to be moving I can go a little bit more gung ho this one. See, I've not put tape on there, but I'm being very, very careful not to tilt the file, not to cut into the lacquer. Shouldn't really do that. I should have it taped up. But there you go. That one, that's that one done. And that's great. <coughs> Easiest one of the lot, that one. one is this one we'll tape it up that tape's too thick for there get rid of that we're not going to need it again <coughs> tear a thin strip off this edge and tear the middle bit out because we're not going to cut otherwise it's going to be too wide that and that just fits inside there that's good last one <coughs> on the edge come 
more or less all the way across this one. Especially on this far edge. It's okay there, high there, high there. <coughs> Got to be very careful with this one because it's not really high in this area. It is there, not there, is there, is there. So I'll take it as smooth as I can. Just feel, feel into this. So high in this area and the end area there. I don't know why they go like this, but sometimes they do. That side again. On that end bit now. See what I mean though about it being precision work? You really got to take your time, you really got to have a feel for it. You can learn this, you know, but you know, do your apprenticeship, get some old necks, and practice. That's exactly what I did. I still today, I'm still honing my skills. I'm still always looking for new ways to improve my techniques, to make things quicker, easier, but in the long, in the main, make them better. You always pick up new ideas from other people. I interact with a lot of other luthiers and guitar techs. I'm not going to mention any names, but I know some great, great guys in this business. And I'm always willing to help them out, as most of them are me. I've had other luthiers, other guitar section around here. And one guy from not, I'm not going to mention his name, but he came over one day and he couldn't believe how I was so open and quite happy to share my, not so much secrets, but share my tips and everything. And he went away thinking, wow, that's great. And I even sent work his way and he's thinking, wow, it's amazing. We're in the same business, we're competing in the same area. And uh, how wonderful. Just got to pause for a second. Do apologise for that. The post person was just coming to the door. Um, anyway, that's all sorted. I think where we were is we just got this just about right. We got it exactly right. Okay, just check the height again. That's my stomach making noises. I had a curry last night. What a fabulous curry it was. Oh, that's wonderful because it's not affected any of the frets around it. So that is it. Seven frets leveled, reprofiled, or recrowned. I just need to, I'm just gonna cut into that with my profiling file and I'm actually gonna turn it around. And work from this side. So I'm going to swap ends. That actually looks pretty good from this end, but it just needs a little bit of extra work on this edge. Just give it that lovely upside down dim shape. So that is it. Really, really good. Well, that's all worked. That looks great. Clean the file. So because I have my little maps there, I know which frets I'm going to have to polish, and polish them I will. I have some, I'll use six different, well I'll use about four different grits of sandpaper, I'll probably go up from 
800, 1000, 1200, 1500, and that should be enough. And I'll finish off with some steel wool. I'll give them all a final polish anyway before it goes back on the guitar. But that is that for now. These frets are now all level. Let's just whip across while we're here with a fret rocker. Just make sure everything's level. Make sure that I've done my job right. And this is how next should come from the factory. It should be like this. You shouldn't have to be spot leveling any frets. These are all great, by the way. So like I say, I'm going to polish them now. But that's it. Those frets are all level. That is all ready. I'll get these polished off camera. This will be ready to go back on the guitar. I've already removed the tuners. Well, I'm going to put the black ones on in a minute. String tree, I'm going to remove this one. I'm going to put a black one on there. I'm going to put another black one on here between the, uh, the, uh, blah, 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 the third and fourth strings. I'm not going to have it as far back as you normally have it. I'm going to have it about there, just under this tuner. So pretty close to the tuner, but it'll just give it a better break angle. Obviously there are certain things I can do um, while I have the neck off the guitar. What I'm going to do is remove the string tree. I'm not going to put the other ones on yet because I don't know where I'm going to install the second one. It's going to be in this region. Normally you'd have it between these two tuners, but I think that's going to be a little bit too close. Um, the good thing about the new string trees we have are oh, they do have a, um, a mount that sits here, a little steel tube. This one doesn't have, this is far too close to the body. Uh, for my liking, this part is just, that's way too close. It needs to be on a mount. But what I'm gonna do, what I'm here is we are gonna replace these tuners. And it's just, it's just a direct fit. Two little holes there, two little studs there, straight in. Direct replacements. These are locking tuners. What's it going on? How good is that? And the good thing about it is I'll use the same box to store the old tuners. What's this going to like with black hardware? I don't know. What's it going to like it's got black hardware? Do I think it's going to work? Again. I don't know, I'm just making sure these aren't staggered because sometimes you get a staggered set. Oh, they are a staggered set, but we're getting them in the right way. Fortunately, they've gone in the right way. Three tall ones, which should then be three short ones. So, string trees are not really needed this guitar I might not put the second one in I'll put the black one on but we don't need string trees not with this set it's a staggered set by staggered I mean this is a much shorter see there shorter stem long 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 short 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 you don't really need string trees with this I will put the one in there because uh, hole in the headstock but I don't think you need the other one old tuners in this box. There you go, just nip those up and they're in. 10 mil spanner should be the right one. You don't need to go mental. Just give them a nip. Probably, barring the fretwork, was probably the easiest job I've ever had in this one. Take all stuff off, 
put new stuff on, put old stuff in new stuff and bags, ship it back. Really, really simple. So that is that done. Don't know where the string tree is at this moment in time, but I will get the small string, the smaller string, string tree on there. I don't think I need this one. I'm going to not install it. I'm going to set the guitar up for the first time with it not installed. If we need to put it on, we can put it on later. Like I say, I'm not going to install the second string tree because we were having staggered uh, tuners. These are a lot shorter stem than these. I don't think we're going to need it. But what I'm going to do is, because the screw on the new string retainer there is thinner than the hole, we're going to plug this hole. But all I'm going to do is take a little piece of, believe it or not, a cocktail stick. And I've trimmed one down a little. All I'm going to do is, I'm not even going to glue it in, I'm just going to pop it in. Like so. I'm going to take a flat end of a screwdriver. Like so, and just press that in. And that is flat. And I can now put a little dob of super glue on there. I don't want to come out, just snip that end off there. No, I have to be very careful with super glue because I hate this stuff. It is one of my pet hates. There you go, a little bit of super glue in there. I'm going to take a bradle or an awl or just a basically a pointed tip and we're just going to put a little hole in there just with a screw. That is it. There you go, a brand new hole. Now it's going tight. It was really loose before, it wouldn't hold. And there you go. And we have a string tree on there, super tight. Beautiful. New tuners, new string tree already. I'm not going to put that one in. I don't think it's going to be needed. If I do think it's going to be needed, I will add it later. Just turn that around. So all I need to do, like I say, I need to polish up those brats. I'm going to put these string retainer back in the pack. Like so. The old one can go in there as well. And that is it. Just now a matter of polishing up these frets, getting this back on the guitar and we'll swap all the other bits over. A couple of things I've cracked on with since you last saw the guitar and uh, just little things like the neck plate is on, um, strap pin, just about to put one in this end. Don't know if you can see from where you are. Again, not anything too uh, difficult for us. I mean, all in all, not a difficult job, this. Just swapping things over and doing a setup on a guitar. And uh, I do have an electric screwdriver, which I use occasionally. And that just makes the job a lot easier. I'll finish off, obviously, with a regular screwdriver. Excuse me while I get this guitar in the right place. Does black work with this blue? I'm not convinced myself, but you know, it's not my guitar. So anyway, um, just need to get everything else off the guitar, get it all swapped over and get it set up. Crack it on with this guitar, and it really is as simple as removing everything and replacing everything. And I'm just removing the tremolo. I'm keeping, I'm gonna use the same claw spring and the same claw screws as, as already in there. No need to swap anything out there. Lift up the guitar, that is the bridge out. Now to look at these inserts, uh, and the new, I've not looked at the new tremolo at all. This is the original Fender, nice piece of kit, nice big block on there as well, I like to see that. I like to see good gear. So I'm gonna fetch Walking some widgets going in, which is here. I don't even know if it fits yet. 
I've got no idea not what's in this pack, so you'll see it at the same time as I do. I'm hoping everything we need is in there. One tremolo on. One tremolo. And the inserts seem to be exactly the same. They are, and they are silver. Surely means we don't need to swap them out. Do we need to swap them out? The claw spring in there. Here are the inserts. Why pull the inserts out when the ones in are pretty much the same? Let's just have a look at. These inserts, because if we can, if we, if we can just swap these over and make it a lot, lot easier. In fact, if we could leave them in, make it much easier. I think these are slightly different, so these are definitely a different screw. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to see if I can leave the originals in because it'd be quite difficult to pull these out. In fact, it'd be very difficult to pull them out. All I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the first saddle and just make sure we can get enough adjustment to get it in the same place. Should go straight onto here. Right, okay. Little piece of tape. I'm going to mark out where the first string hits. First string hits the saddle right there. And again, the other side. And let's just see what we can do. If it won't fit, it's not going to swap anything. No, it's not going to fit. I have to remove the studs because they won't fit over there. Okay, mm, that makes things difficult. How do I remove these studs? Very good question. Right, why I ponder that? Why I ponder that? We'll, uh, we'll move on. Let me just check here. Yeah. So the oh right, so these go. And this is how this works. You see, I didn't know this. These will have to be steel because you basically insert these. In there, then you put that on there. That's how that works. I did not know that. Right, I'm able to drill out these holes. So, okay, change of plan. Let's change what we can. Well, let's remove everything. We're going to pull these out somehow. So, I will work around that. Let's get. Get all the hardware off, we'll be assembling this outside of the guitar. Okay, so let's see where we are with this. I've already undone taking out the input jack. Right, it's just a matter of there's an earth wire for the bridge. I'm going to take all of this out of the guitar everything so let's see what I've got to disconnect. I've got to disconnect one screw and I've got to cut one wire. Cutting a wire is no big deal for me. Let's get this all out. Screw back in there for now. Let's work out how we're going to pull these studs. There are a few ways and a few methods we can use. This wire, I'm not going to faff about. I'm just going to snip it and we'll resolder it on again later. Even if I need to extend it, we'll extend it. Because that makes that free. Get that out of the way. It's just going to be an earth wire. That's fine there. So let's work out. I'm going to remove the neck again. I'm going to work out how we're going to remove these. I may have to. I'm going to think about it and I will come back to you on that one. We will sort it out. 
change of tack. And what I would like to do is get something like a nice fat headed screw like this, drop it in that hole upside down like that, take the original insert like this and tighten it up against that screw and hopefully without busting through the back of the guitar it'll give us enough force and it will start lifting that insert. And you see I already tested this and it worked, there you can see it working. And that is the way I'd always try and do it. And there you go, that is one out. And the other one. How very brilliant. Hopefully this one will come out the same. Put the screw end in first, because you don't want it busting through the back. And it looks like that one is trying to bust through the back. That's not good. Right, okay. We're going to have to try something else on this one. What? I do not know. I'll think about it. It's not bad. It's causing no resistance at all, it was coming out absolutely fine, look at that. What I was going to do, if this didn't work, was I was going to get a bolt with the same thread as this, a long bolt, and would have structured some kind of uh, bridge here with big washers, and would have screwed the long bolt into that, and that would eventually have pulled this up anyway. But we're good, it's fantastic. So really pleased this has come out like this. Now the other big question is, do the inserts I've just bought fit these holes? The honest answer to that question right now is, I don't know. And if not, I'm going to have to get the drill press out. I'm going to mask off the whole guitar. And we're going to drill. Redrill these holes. Alright, oh, there you go, that's out. That's beautiful. How oh, good it was that. Praise the Lord that, that everything fitted and worked well there. So those are out. Very good, so let's have a look at these. I think they're gonna be a little bit wider. Hmm, they might not be. I may have to slightly ream these holes out a little because the, uh, these have got a thick rib, these have got a thin rib. Let's have a look. But if these fit as they are, I don't have to do anything. I don't think I'm gonna to have to do anything there. Am I? Mm, I'm a bit reluctant to hammer those in, they are tight. I'm going to ever so slightly, I'm going to drill these holes. I'm going to remove the neck, I'm going to clamp this body down. I'm not going to use a drill press, I'm going to do it by hand and I'm going to re drill these holes ever so slightly. I could try reaming them. Um, could I try a scraper in there? A little bit reluctant to do that. Let's measure everything with a caliper just to see. How much difference we are looking at. Bear with me a second guys, I know there's nothing showing on the camera. Of course the caliper has now decided it's not working. Sorry about this guys. Oh my caliper is broken. My digital caliper it will not zero. Hmm, very strange. Bear with. Oh right, okay. Battery in it is now zeroed out. It's working fine. Zero, that's great. So let's measure. These are the old ones. I'll measure in millimetres, that's 9.8. New ones are 
9.92, so they are slightly bigger. So let's go into inches. Old ones are 0.387 inch. New ones 0.392 inch. Back to millimetres. This is a 10 mil. 9.96, the new ones, old ones, 9.9. So I'm going to go in there with a 10 mil. Let's just have a look, see what I have. I may, let's just grab a drill bit by hand and get in there. Let's go with a, I do have a nine and a half. This is a nine and a half. And maybe this will just kind of ream out just a little bit. Because if I don't have to, if I don't have to drill, it's even better. That has basically taken away the thickness of those lines in there. I bet if I got a, uh, do I want to force anything like this in? No, if I force anything in, it's going to crack the wood. We don't want to do that. 9.5. I'm going to go in with a 10. When we're talking... Very tiny amounts. But a 10. See, a 10 is going to work. Okay, I'll set up the drill, <clears throat> I'll set up a depth gauge, we don't want to be chipping into any of the wood, which we're not at the moment, I'm going to redraw these, it's something I'm going to do, um, I could do it on camera, I'm going to do it with a hand drill, I'm going to get this all clamped down in a vise, I'm going to come out, I'm going to drill these, and we're going to get these inserts put in properly. An even better way than drilling is a drill bit, the mole grip, and we'd already start the hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert in there. It will follow the line anyway, and all we need to do is just turn and press, and it's just going to ream that extra little bit out that we need. I think that's probably all the way in. Let's just remove, and that should be deep enough. Let's have a look. And that is deep enough. A nice, clean hole there. No chipping whatsoever. Just beautiful. Just get in there and make sure we are deep enough. Done. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to grab some uh, Scotch 3M tape, low tack. We know the bridge is going to work, so we don't need those markers anymore. Just doing this just so we don't mark the wood on the body of the guitar. Doesn't need to be super precise, it just needs to be close. Go 
good. So just to put the inserts in. You go, didn't even need to tap them in. That is perfect. Remove all this. Not needed. How good's that? Should I glue them in? No, shouldn't. I'm not going to glue them in. I may. I may just remove these and just basically. Just wrap a little tiny bit of uh, masking paper around those inserts. See if we can pull them out easy enough. Yes, so what we're going to do in this instance is... Now I'm going to tap those in. There's another one like that. So just so we don't mark anything. Taking a small, my small fretting hammer. That is a super tight fit. That's beautiful. That is how we're going to do it. We're going to do exactly the same with the one on that side. Beautiful. Hole there for the wire that goes under the bridge, the earth wire. Is it? I imagine. Is it there? Should be. I should find out. The way in which this bridge differs from the original is you have to put these in over the tremolo because you don't slide through. So there you go, turn back just a little, turn back just a little. And that is a fulcrum tremolo. I'm going to, just for ease, I'm just going to bring these right in. Just about the only black strap type tremolo on the market, this one. Use the screws it came with. I'm going to use the claw that was already in there. No point in changing anything over. I like to run the springs all in the same direction, not in a V-shape. I've always preferred to do that, so I'm going to do that with this. I'm just looking for the right screwdriver. Here you go. So I'm going to do that with this. to do it and there you go the new tremolo is in just check the saddles everything looks fine we've got plenty of intonation there turn back that's what I was going to do yeah that's fine, we've got plenty of adjustment there for the intonation, that's all good. So, the most difficult part is now complete. 
Do I like these? I don't particularly like these uh, silver screws with a black tremolo. I would have liked to have seen black screws on there, but no. Just check. straight push in oh and that works really well we've got all the way down there all the way down to the body that's fantastic we've got a bit of pullback that's normal position that's pullback position oh that's really that feels really smooth so okay love the travel already that's it that's all the hard stuff done so let's get everything get the camera moved again and uh, we'll start getting everything set up, everything wired in, and an uh, hour or so, a couple of hours, we'll be done. And that, my friends, is the tricky stuff more or less done. All I've got to do now is take everything off here, put it on here, and a few other bits, a little bit of soldering, back cover plate, pickle covers, Black knobs are all going to go on there. Um, black jack socket. Well, not socket, jack plate. But it is not a black jack socket. Uh, I'd have been looking at installing one of those as well, but one is not supplied, so I can't do that. Uh, but pretty straightforward from now on. Uh, just get all this stuff in, swapped over, and uh, get the setup done. Uh, we could have also gone with a black knob. Something else we could have fallen off. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to crack on uh, with this. I'm going to do it all off camera now. It's all simple stuff. I'm going to remove the knobs, undo everything, get the black cover plates on the pickups. We're going to put the black knobs on there. Look for a black switch tip for that. All going on the black scratch plate. Um, we'll put the black cover on the back, and that'll be it. And then we'll get it set up. So stay tuned. Make sure you come back for the setup. Just want to give you a quick sneak preview. The guitar's not finished yet. I've got a little bit of soldering to do and I've still got to do the setup, but look at that. That definitely looks better than I thought it would do. I wasn't too uh, struck with the colour choices, but now everything's on. It looks fantastic. Doesn't that look good? All black. One little hiccup. There were no black screws sent with this black control plate, but not control plate, uh, trim plate, but I have a bag of black screws. That says I'll chuck them in for nothing. So uh, we're gonna do that. So, a couple of things you gotta do. I'm gonna take the tremolo off again and tighten up the grub screw at the back for the tremolo on, because it's swinging a little bit too loose. Something I didn't think of when I um, put it in, but going really, really well. Doesn't it look fantastic? I can't wait to get plugged in and play it a little bit. That'd be great. Just want to show the situation with this kind of tremolo, this Wilkinson tremolo. And to remove the block for any reason, you actually need to remove these studs because they go through the top of the bridge. Because, show you why. Top of the studs does not fit through the holes. So you have to actually thread through. Say for instance, I want to tighten this grub screw here to tighten the tremolo. I have to first remove the whole tremolo block, which is a bit of a pain, but I think once I've got this set, how I want it, it should be okay. Well, that's pretty tight, but does, does that pull up and down? Yeah, it does, it pulls in and out. Okay, that's good, I'm quite happy with that. Is it gonna work loose? I flip it out not. That's tight enough. Can I pull it in and out? Yes, I can. So pulling it back in. Let's hope that that is how the um, owner of this guitar wants that set. So there you go. That is set now. There's a fly buzzing around this room. I never, ever let flies in this room. It's because I've got the back door open and we're flying in. That fly will get one chance to get out of this room. 
And if it doesn't leave, when it gets near the opening of the window or the door, I will kill it. I've got a no mercy policy with flies, I hate them. I despise them. Horrible, disgusting things. Let's get on my nerves, that one's going to die. It will die, it will die. Just going to screw these all the way in for now. We're not going to stay all the way in because we're going to set the travel in later. But this is just to set the travel on. Does it go in and out? Yes, it does. And it's tight. And it pulls out. And that is great. So spin around. It swings back in. Something I should have done before I put the tremolo in. Can I stretch this enough? No, I can't. I'm right handed, that's my left hand. And I'm working the wrong way around. But we're in, we're in, we're in. There we are. So, we're just about there. All I need to do is get some strings on now, set the guitar up. Really easy for today, nice and relaxed. It's Saturday afternoon, I've got the football on. And the laptop, that's brilliant. And uh, I'm peddling about with guitars. How is that? It's fantastic. Let's move on to the setup. I'm just gonna show um, how I like to wind strings uh, with lockable tuners and you don't have to do this but it's something I've always done and what I do is I always like to give them at least half a turn around the post before I lock them down so I'm going to show you one I've already got four strings on and I'm also going to explain how we set up the tremolo uh, first the strings thread the string through Up and over the saddle, and then I like to just make sure we're on camera. We're on camera. I like to go round the back, pull the string through, and pull it as much as I can get it through, then lock it down. And that's going to give me at least half a turn. Hang on, I didn't pull it all the way through, did I? Let's go with that again. get it th through as much as I can so they can be a little bit uh, can be a little bit tough to do this but let's get a wind around there there you go that's good enough and especially on these ones I like to get at least a full wind around the post and we're gonna get a full wind here look at that like I say you don't have to do this it's just I like to do that because otherwise Say for instance, I need to loosen this and tighten it again. Like when I'm cutting the nut, for instance, it's gonna have that one point where it bends around and I guarantee nine times out of 10, when you tighten it up again, it's gonna snap on that corner. So I like to go around the post. It does kind of, in a way, defeat the object of what a locking tuner is. Some might say, I, I don't think so. And if I need to loosen that string again, I can do, and I can pull it through just that little bit more and it's not going to bend on the same break point. I snap loads of strings, loosening these and tightening them up again. And that costs money. It's not so much a time issue. But, and there you go. And chances are, I won't really have to loosen, I may have to loosen just a little bit, because I've got to cut the nut yet. So just one little tip. Also, I've decided, the break angle on these strings is not so bad, but this one, this, Tune is staggered, this one isn't. I am going to install a string tree here, so I'm going to have to loosen these a little bit anyway. And I'm going to put the string tree, I've got to put it away from the tuner, otherwise it's going to be very close. I'm going to put it just this side, I'm not going to put it right in the middle where you normally put it, I'm just going to put it this side of this tuner, just to give me it so I've got enough clearance away from that. And what I'll do is I'll take a pen or, or, or a, a um, what do you call them, a bradle, and just mark a little 
got a little mark where I need to drill the hole. I'm going to drill a small hole and we're going to put the string tree on there. Anyway, show you how I like to wind the strings, give them one wind round, or at least half a turn. So going through the back, pull it through, tighten up. Then you're at least halfway round a tuning post. Right then guys, we're getting right to the end uh, of this setup and I'm going to try and cram everything in on this part and I'm going to try and show you how we set up um, a guitar basically from scratch. Now I've already put the new strings on, you'll see, notice, this is additional by the way, I've also put the other string tree on there. I haven't heard about whether it needed it or not, it certainly needs it on the G string, so I installed it anyway. And I think it, it just looks really professional and really good when you have two of them on there. But anyway, about the setup. So, I'm going to explain how we do the setup. And what I've done is, I've got the guitar strung up to tension, standard uh, E standard tuning. Uh, I've not stretched the strings in yet, but I've got it up to pitch. So it is in tune, but the strings will need stretching there. But what I like to do before that is I like to get the neck set and the tremolo set. I always have the tremolo perfectly horizontal, I don't have it up on one side or down on the other like some do, because I was setting the action, the right action, the radius, on the saddles themselves. And so I always go, try and get to where these saddle adjustment screws are at the top of travel. They are, they're not sticking out, but they are at the top there. And that always works for me. And once I've got these two strings set with the neck set, I can do everything else from there. I know the tremolo's level, I've also tightened the claw string at the back tighter than it needs to be, so it is pulling the tremolo right back. So when we tune to pitch, I always we have some business cards stacked underneath here to keep the bridge horizontal, perfectly horizontal. It will not move. The springs are pulling super tight, so they're pulling the tremolo back, so it will always be in that position. And that is going to be the playing position. Once I've got the height set on the adjustment screws and the saddles, in the next set, we can start from there. So, in a nutshell, not, not so much in a nutshell, but let me explain what I've done. So, I've got strings up to tension. We've got the, the uh, not straight edge on the neck, and I look for a measurement on, under the ninth fret, or between frets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, and nine. I'm looking for a measurement relief of 0.25 millimeters, and that's where the feeler gauge is just rubbing. You can hear it just rubbing underneath. That's perfect. So that's my next set, how I want it. I then set the height of the strings above the 12th fret. And I only set these two, the high E and the low E. The high E, I would like 1.5 millimeters above the fret to the bottom of the string. And on the low E, 1.75 millimeters. Once that's set, we can do everything else from here, from the saddle. So I have these two strings set exactly where they need to be with the saddles, Horizontal, not angled like that, perfectly horizontal, or as close to horizontal as you can get them. And I'm now going to set the radius on the saddle. So how I do that is I take a radius gauge, nine and a half inch radius on this guitar. So we're going to look for a nine and a half inch radius gauge, which is this one. And what we'll do is in the middle, under the strings. And we just check that the radius is nine and a half, which it is. So now with the first and sixth strings already set where we need them to be, we are going to set all of the other strings. And this, these are too low because this is pushing down. I know that's high, that's high, that's high. We need to alter this one with the supplied Allen wrench, supplied by Wilkinson. We're going to bring all of these higher than they need to be. And there you go. With those all higher than they need to be, what we're going to do is we're going to lower each string onto the top of this radius gauge. And that will set our radius. It won't be a perfect set radius yet because we still need to do the intonation. So we're going to need to do this again once the intonation is set. But I'll explain about that in a little while. So we're just going to drop the strings onto the top of the radius gauge there. hoping that these are set level. We're going to set them level again anyway. But once they're touching this, the top of the radius gauge, we know that the radius at the bridge matches the radius of the fingerboard itself. 
I'm also going to do the same at the nut end. So a little bit high on this side. But that's it. We have all of the strings now sat on top of this radius gauge. That means that the radius here matches the radius here and hopefully the radius at the nut. We're going to set that later. So what we're going to do is we're just going to check that these are perfectly horizontal. I'm not going to zoom in. And they are more or less perfectly horizontal. That is a good setup. We just need to drop. If I'm going to drop this an eighth of the turn, like so, I need to hire this one an eighth of the turn just to even that up and keep the same height. Same again with this one. That looks pretty good. This one I need to drop maybe a sixteenth of the turn, but I'll bring this one up a sixteenth. And that will maintain that height perfectly. And that to me looks pretty good. So we have set the radius on the bridge. The bridge is not moved, we still have the business cars underneath with the strings springs tighter than they need to be, so it's pulling it right back. So what I need to do now is get it close to tune in again. Don't have to get it spot on, just get it close. So very close to pitch, to correct pitch there. Now we're again, we're going to measure again at the 12th fret. Perfect 1.75. And 1.5, that's perfect. So, we now have a radius set there, like I've just said. To match the radius there, to match the radius hopefully that we're not, we'll do we're not in a little while. We've still got the right height above the 12th fret, so we now know that all this is set perfectly. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to do the intonation. So I'm going to get the guitar lead for that. And the thing is, we let having a guitar laid down, it will not give you correct pitch. It will be out by a cent or two. Uh, but I will do this in the playing position in a while. You may notice I've not mentioned the tremolo yet. I'll get to the tremolo shortly. We're just going to set the intonation. The E is perfect already. That's great. B. Perfect. G. G is flat. And when I went flat, one way I always remember this is if a fretted note at the 12th is flat, but in the open note it's, it's perfect, the whole one should be perfect, but the note is flat, we need to move the saddle towards the neck. And the way I remember this is if a note is flat at the 12th, we move the saddle to the left as I look at it. Here's a saddle, we move it to the left. Uh, the thing about that is flat and left are both four letters. If the note was sharp, at the 12th fret, we'd move it to the right. And the good thing about that is, the word sharp and right are both five letters. So if a note's sharp, we move it to the right, or the saddle to the right. And if it's flat, we move it to the left. Really easy way to remember it. Four letters, four letters for sharp, for flat and left. Five letters, five letters for right and sharp. So we need to move that saddle again toward the neck. I'm going to take a screwdriver and I'm going to do exactly that. And I'm going to loosen three or four turns. And then I'm going to pull it back one turn. Strings are pinching a bit in the nut, but I've not cut the nut yet. Perfect. D string. D string's also flat. Loosen slightly. 
these round and settle toward the neck. String. Perfect. A little bit flat. No, it was flat anyway. So check again. And that's it. We have the intonation set. So moving on from there. We now set the radius at the bridge. We've got the bridge perfectly level, business cards underneath, springs pulling back harder than they need to. Radius set, radius set, intonation set at the 12. The next thing we need to look at now is the nut. And I'm going to again take 0.25 millimeters. It is kind of my uh, go to measurement. And we're just going to look, and that's fine because I'd like 0.3 on these two strings. Bit too much of a gap there. Again, just a little bit. And I'd like to be about 0.2 on these ones. And we are a tiny bit high, especially on these four strings. So we're gonna we're gonna open these nut slots up anyway because this is an 11. What set of strings do I have on here? Let's have a look. We are an 11.49 set. And you're pretty much guaranteed that these are cut for 942s, this nut. So we're going to have to flare open, slightly flare open these uh, nut slots anyway. So I'm going to do that in a minute. But before I do that, I'm going to have a little break. I'm going to take the camera off. I'm going to prepare myself. And we're going to, we're going to come back and we're going to get that done. Okay. Hosco nut slot files. So 1046 set, there are three files, but there are six different file sizes. There are two cuts per file, one at the top, one at the bottom. Or one on the left, one on the right, whichever way you look at it. This one is the first and fourth string, which is 10 and 26. This one's the second and fifth strings, which is a 13 and a 36. And this one is the third and sixth strings, which is 17 and 46. And we're gonna take the 46 cut, Thick one. They will cut a perfect round, by the way. They don't cut a V, they cut a round, and we're just going to measure sixth string. A little bit higher than I would like it, as is the fifth string. And to prove that, listen. So as long as we are fretting a note with 0.3 gap underneath, we just I just want I'm looking for a little buzz. No buzz, no buzz, no buzz. So we are gonna gently carve into the nut slot, flaring that open slightly because it needs to be a 49. This is a 46. So all we're gonna do is very gently, we're just gonna carve in, we're not gonna press, just gonna carve in and we're just gonna slightly angle and just flare that nut slot open. And you'll know when you're cutting because you'll feel it and all we're going to do is we're going to put the string back on we're going to check the tune in if it's got a little bit flat we know we've cut into the knot anyway so now we're going to start removing now we've flared it over a little we're now going to cut into the slot, we're just going to make that slot a little bit deeper. I'm going to angle ever so, ever so slightly toward the tuners. So very slightly lifting up the file as I carve. Flaring open a little. And what we need to do is we need to be very careful. We don't want to remove too much. Now I, I've given myself a little bit of a leeway with 0.3. I could go down to 0.2. Just starting to buzz, that pleases me, that is enough. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna very, very gently just flare open. 
I'm not going to cut any more depth. And that's it. And I'm very happy with how that is. In, that's great. We'll move on to the next one. Get the file out of the way. We need, need that again for the third string. Move over to this one. This is a 36 one side, a 13, the other 36 being this one. We need that to go to round about 37, 38. So we're just going to check the height. Go down a fair old bit there. I'm going to slacken this string off. I don't want to just move it out of the way if I can. Hopefully get it to hold somewhere. If it's not going to hold anywhere, we'll just slacken it right off. We'll get it out of the way over there. No, we won't. It doesn't want to do that. Okay, we'll just carry on as we are. I'll have to hold it with my finger. And again, nice and gentle. You'll feel it working. Flare open. Just widen that slot. So I need to work this one. I'm going to hold this out of the way with my thumb. I'm going to very, very carefully carve with one hand. Flare it open. If I've gone flat, as we'll come to that a little. Just keep checking. Still too high, little bits at a time. Cut too much, you'll be replacing the knot. It's gonna cost you money and it's gonna cost you time. So nice and gentle. And remember, some of these files are really sharp. Quite easy to go too deep. Nice, we're just going to now, I'm just going to smooth that off. That's deep enough. We know the string is not pinching, which is nice. I could really loosen that, couldn't I? And just get it out of the way. Over there, it's going to be a lot, lot better. Again, just slightly opening it up, not cutting, not going deeper now, just flaring the edges open. And what I like to do sometimes is just on the back edge. Just flare that just a little bit for a little bit of movement. Don't cut into the shelf behind you. Just a little flare there. And that should now be perfect. I'm going to do the same for all of the other strings. And this is what I mean about what I mentioned earlier about tightening strings again when you've already got a bend in there. That's why I like to put a wrap around so you don't snap the string when you tighten it up again. Beautiful. Take a measure. So I'm going to move on to the next strings. Now the next two strings, I'm going to probably go a little bit deeper. I'm going to be looking for probably 0.275 height. So I'm going to get a little bit more buzz when I do these two. And these two down here, probably get down to 0.25. Maybe even 0.25 on these two, 0.2 on these two will be good enough. You also check by eye, because you will see how the slope works. But anyway, I'm going to crack on with that. I'm going to get the rest done off camera. Um, and I'll come back when it's done and show you how we are. Then we'll move on to setting the tremolo. My least favorite part of the whole process, stretching the strings. Don't mind the first, the bottom four strings, but it's these two, especially the E string. Pull it too hard and they snap. I've had so many strings snap over the years, but I've oh, actually done these strings already. I've stretched them all bar the G string. So I'm going to stretch under the string tree and just move down the length of the neck. It's going to pull the treble up. This is why it's better with the treble, you see, with strings because you very rarely snap strings. Just 
and I go a couple of times, two should be enough. And again, don't go mental, you don't want to snap anything, send everything out of whack. And that is it. So now before we set the tremolo, I'm going to get the guitar into the playing position. And you should be able to see it on the small screen, the picture in picture screen. And we're going to get it all tuned in. So I'm going to show you how we set the tremolo. And it's really easy. Notice now the strings aren't pinching in the knot. Okay final part of the process and the most exciting part this is where we set the tremolo and this is where everything pays off uh, when you set the tremolo as it is with the springs at the back over time now let me turn the guitar over this is always my method to turn it over place a pad and okay the guitar's not even because i've got a lead plugged in but uh, you can see, you probably can't see where you are, but I over tightened these screws and they are more or less all the way in. And what's going to happen is when I remove the business cards from under the tremolo block, those springs are going to pull the tremolo back and it's going to pull back that way. It's going to pull everything sharp. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the tremolo on, we're going to release the tremolo. Mm -hmm. And now everything should be sharp. Let's turn the tuner on. Yeah. B flat, E flat, more or less. G sharp. B sharp, E sharp. Almost an F there. And what we need to do now is to get this guitar in perfect tune. Move the tremolo for starters. We are going to just loosen these claws. Both the same amount. We're going to bring it back evenly and we're just going to keep checking the tuning while we do that. Got the tuner plugged in. Got to take, always super important to use the exact right size screwdriver, otherwise, you're going to chew the nuts. Now, let me just show you where we are. You'll see this on the PIP screen, picture in picture screen. I'll just bring you in there. We're going to be loosening these two claw screws, same amount, one at a time. But when the A string drops into tuning, all the others should automatically drop into tune. So we're going to get on there. Just a couple of turns. Check again. And I will keep doing this until the A string drops in. And we should be able to get it in perfect tune just by loosening these screws. Nice and even right. Still sharp, still sharp. What we're looking to do is get that tremolo in the exact same position as it was in when we had it clamped back with the business cards underneath. Still sharp. So a little bit, oh, we're getting very, very close. And once this is set, let's have a look, I think we're close. E. 
is fine. B is And we are in. And that is how we set a floating tremolo. And I'm going to alter the camera angle so I can show you properly in a moment. Um, I'm going to get the back plate on and we'll tie up this video. And this is always the best part. It's the end of the video. Uh, this guitar is finished and wow, isn't that something else? It is beautiful. So he came in, the guy bought the guitar with me in mind. He had upgrades, he knew what he wanted to do with the guitar. He bought the guitar, he already had me in mind to do this work. So he shipped the guitar to me from Manchester can you do this? Blah, 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 blah. We talked about it before he even shipped it, obviously. And yeah, one uh, minor blip, one minor blip, it's a blip. I had to level the frets. There were seven or eight, I can't remember how many it was. Seven or eight needed attention. I think it was seven. We ended up doing eight or nine, I think. But they have been done. We've swapped out everything. All of the hardware has changed. The electrics, we took them out off the old scratch plate, put them in here. New pickups, the whole lot. Uh, new tremolo, I had to re drill the holes for the new tremolo pose but this is what I want to show you about the last part of the setup doing the business card method as I use and the tight spring now tight springs now look at the tremolo it is perfectly horizontal as it should be and we have up and down movement on the tremolo but it's perfectly horizontal that is floating and the guitar is in perfect tune it's beautiful. And it's all done. And uh, I think I've virtually covered everything. It looks fantastic. It looks better than I thought it was. The reason why it may not look fantastic to you is because I've left the plastic cover on the pit guard and on the back plate. I'm going to let the owner of the guitar have the best satisfaction of removing that and it'll look pristine and new and fantastic. I think the guitar looks brilliant. I didn't expect, I didn't think the black was going to work, but I was totally wrong. It so works and it looks fantastic. But that is one done, another one done. I'm going to get this all boxed up. I'm going to remove the tremolo for starters. It's going to get, it is double boxed. It came to be double boxed. It'll be going back double boxed. I'll be shipping it via iPost Parcels or now owned by DHL. You probably know iPost Parcels as UK Mail. It used to be part of the UK Mail Group, now owned by DHL. Uh, so that's how it will be going back. Uh, it will go out tomorrow. It will receive it on Wednesday. And uh, the project is finished. And what a fantastic project it's been. It's been real fun to work on this one. I do need to give the guitar a wipe over. Some finger marks on there. I'll sort that out in a moment. But that is it all done. It is a Mexican, made in Mexico, Fender Player Series Stratocaster. Lovely satin finish on it. I love the neck on this, it's brilliant. And it's great. All new upgrades, all black hardware, fret level, reprofiling, and it's good to go. This guitar will bring many years of pleasure. It is ultimately set up. Um, it shouldn't need touching. I would get this professionally set up probably once a year. And that will be it. Oh, strings were put on there, by the way, are D'Addario NYXL. They are 11.49, so this guitar is set up for 11.49s. If you change to 9.42s, you're going to have to alter the truss rod and set it up accordingly, reset the tremolo, but that is it. It's all done. My name is Victor. I'm your fret friend. And until next time, just before I go, I remind you, fretfriend.co.uk is up and running. Go and check that out. Even better, go to my Facebook page. We can find out everything you need to know about me and what I do. And you'll find that at facebook.com forward slash ng17. That's facebook.com forward slash n-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n. That's it. We're all done. What a great project. Really enjoyed it. But until next time, boys and girls, as always, God bless you. Be good to each other. And I'll see you next time.